break to catch up on things. We had the new website we had to get finished. Check it out, futurepro.com. And while you're there, check out our summer camps, almost filled. We've got the prospect camp for all your elite midget AAA goalies and above, junior, college, pros. There are gonna be some high-end goalies there and some high-end shooters. There's one spot left in the prospect camp, so check that out. Of course, throughout the rest of the summer, we have programming for every age kid. We've got the developmental level, the advanced level, and the elite level, and it's offered at all of our locations. We've got a great staff, most ice time in the business for the lowest amount of money, and great personal coaching from myself and all the other goalie coaches that we have on staff. I will know every kid by name, like I have for 30 years, and I will work with you personally every single day. Check it out, futurepro.com. If you'd like a second week for 50% off, reach out and I'll send you the code so you can get a discount and get your 50% off for your second week of Future Pro Goalie School. All right, what's tracking? People that know me know I make fun of that term all the time, but I do actually like the term tracking. It means watching the puck with discernment. Now what does that mean? A lot of times goalies get very puck focused. They don't see off the puck, they don't battle through screens, they don't use their visual skills and the reactionary skills because they're not locked into the puck on the way in and on the way out of their body. Now one of the greatest that I've seen in my time is obviously Eddie Belfort. He would watch that puck hit his chest. He would watch that puck leave his chest. He had great tracking skills. But remember back then, Brodeur, Patrick Waugh, and Eddie Belfort, they didn't know what the word tracking meant. They just intently watched the puck in and out of their body. And that's a great skill that every goalie that goes to the higher levels has to have. Way, way long time ago when I was 14, I invented white pucks. Then later clear pucks and mini pucks for training tracking. And basically what it was, is it made the puck harder to see, so in practice, things were harder, projectiles were harder to identify, in games it would presumably be easier. Now the genesis for that idea was from the major leagues. There was a pitcher, or sorry, a hitter from the Mets, and his dad would put him in a pole barn, dim down the lights, and use a pitching machine. And he was able to put a bat on the ball in the dimmest of lights, check that seam rotation, determine his off-speed pitch or fastball, and then when he went out to the field, bright sunlight, he could see that ball in the seam rotation off the pitcher's hand like it was in slow motion. So I wanted to make that something we could do in goaltending. Now obviously out here, we've got lights you can't dim. So what I did was I took some pucks when I was 14, so 1979, somewhere back in there, and I put white rubberized roofing compound on them, and it blended in with the ice, not a lot of contrast between the projectile and the background. And at the end of the day, it made it really hard for goalies to see that puck or track that puck all the way in. So one way to improve tracking is to use some of my white pucks. They're available all over the place now. I took that a step further. I ended up using clear pucks. Had a company in Michigan make them. They were nice and rubber and, and bendable. And when they got on the ice, they hardened right up and clear. You couldn't even see them. Only problem was UV unstable, so they ended up turning yellow after a little bit. But many of you guys out there that have been to my camps have seen the white pucks and the clear pucks. Now the mini pucks I brought to the NHL with Nashville with the goalie coach there, Mitch Korn. And he used them on Vokun and Dunham. And basically the mini pucks found holes in armpits, found holes in your save selections. Only negative, cat's eyes they would go in. But these three things were something I brought to the game to help improve visual acuity and help a goalie's ability to track the puck. Another thing you can do to help with your tracking is understanding how to read the play. Where guys are, who's open, etc. I've got a great script for you to use next time you watch an NHL game where it breaks down how you watch the game as a critical thinker. That will also help your puck tracking for one reason. Now you got the visual skills, but now we have the mental we have the mental skills, the intelligent anticipation, the connecting the dots. What's double coverage? When I went to the hockey school at Huron Hockey School in Shamrock when I was a little kid, they were always preaching double coverage. And they were referring to you when you're in your upright stance on your feet, didn't want your blocker over in front of your knee or your gloves in front of your body. You wanted to have width in your stance, which makes a lot of sense, particularly because your job is to fill space. And you guys all know who fill space is, correct? At the end of the day, things have changed. Goalies don't get caught standing up and get hit with the puck anymore. 
So double coverage is a myth. Of course, we don't want to be as small as possible, but at the end of the day, if your blocker's a little bit in front of your pads up on your feet, not an issue. Where double coverage becomes an issue is when you go into your final save position, your down save position, your butterfly. That's when we don't want to have things in tight double covering. We want width of coverage and height of coverage without any holes. So here you go, double coverage. It's a myth when you're standing, but it's a valuable input a valuable skill to have when you're in your down final save position. I want to show you double coverage in your stance where you got the blocker maybe covering here, trapper might be in front, or it could be something like this I see quite often. Now, I don't like double coverage, but it's not as fatal as you'd think because you're not going to make a stand up save anymore. Where double coverage becomes a problem is when you butterfly. This is where we don't want to have gloves in and be tight like this because you're not covering as much net. So double coverage only ever causes a problem when you're down in your butterfly. One of my biggest pet peeves, catching the puck. Goalies today can't catch the puck. And I think there's a fundamental reason for that. Number one, the glove is so protective, there's not a pain price if it hits you incorrectly. If it bangs off the heel of your hand, off your fingers, it's not gonna hurt. I'm not screaming at clouds, I'm not being the old man, get off my lawn. I'm just telling you, everybody that coaches goalies knows this. Goalies can't catch the puck today. A Couple things we've gotta talk about. We've gotta make sure we get the glove broken in so that's not the excuse. The second thing we got to be good at is making sure we make primary contact with the projectile, the puck, in the pocket and have a cushioning, a shock absorber effect. And at the end of the day, I don't think a lot of kids play baseball, play catch with their dad, play catch with their buddies anymore, so catching skills are lacking. The Finnish goalies are awesome. They play a game called bandy or something like that. This is similar to baseball, heavily weighted on catching and following and tracking projectiles in. So to become a better catcher of the puck, Glue that glove on your hand. Go out and play catch with your dad. Go play catch with your son. Go play catch with your buddy. Throw a puck around. Catch it in that glove. And make sure your primary point of contact is the puck hit in the pocket. And your eyes should be double eye contact watching that puck hit your glove. Let's catch the puck, can we? We also talk about glove saves. And when we're making glove saves, the key is we have to have the, the glove in front of the stance equal to the blocker, so move the blocker forward. And as the puck comes in, we cushion it like a shock absorber. And we want to have double eye contact where we snap our head and we watch it into the glove. And the key is we got to hit the puck in the pocket, not on the palm, not on the heel of the hand. So let's try some simple basic saves with the glove, and let's see how many of these we can stick in your glove without getting down to the ice. Pretty simple, ain't it, Tan? At the end of the day, just catch the puck. Catch the puck in the pocket. When it comes to the glove, the blocker is also part of the gloves. And the blocker I see, less of an issue, but there are some key errors that we do see. The blocker lock is when you set your blocker right on the side of your pad has the blocker back in your stance equal with your body. So first of all, that doesn't cover as much net as if your gloves are projected forward. Secondly, it creates a problem because to get that stick on a shot to the glove side low, you've got to push your blocker forward and then slide it to the side. It takes too long. So goalies that lock the blocker on the side of their pad are going to have one fundamental problem that we see all the time, not using sticks a lot on low shots. So with your blocker, let's get that thing projected forward. Another problem I see with the blocker, don't be following Instagram, watching all these muffin shots where the goalie makes a blocker save and the toe of the stick comes up, flying up in the air. Your stick should stay down low somewhere near your five hole as you're executing that blocker save. It shouldn't be hinging up in front of your body eight feet off the ice. Keep your stick low, keep your blocker low, and don't punch at the puck. Let the speed of the puck do the work. You're gonna be better with your gloves if you follow these tips and make sure at the end of the day, we watch the puck hit our blocker, we watch the puck hit our trapper, and we do a great job of tracking the puck. My favorite word. All right, Natan, I wanna talk about the blocker lock and here's what it looks like. When a goalie's in his stance, if he rests the thumb portion 
on his pad creates a problem. And the problem is the glove's not covering as much net as if the glove's projected, so move it up. That covers way more net. And it gives you access to the puck when you're making stick saves. If you put it back in the blocker lock like this, now for you to stop a puck here, you have to pull it forward and then bring it across to get stick involvement. That's not going to be ideal. Next thing we want to talk about is blocker saves. So stand up for a second to 10 and step in the net. And here's a common thing we see on Instagram. Goalies making this mistake with their blocker. With the sticks up in the air, doing all that. That's a clear mistake. That's a clear mistake. The stick needs to stay down low, near the ice. So when you make a blocker save, it stays low. It's not up swatting flies. That's miscoaching. It shouldn't be any different than what you just saw there. Swat.